Hello. Right, I thought I'd make a video showing one aspect of the Chinese servos that people fall foul of. Uh, right, this is Chinese AC servo system. It's not a closed loop stepper system, it's the full blown AC servo drive. It's the common AASD. This is a 15 amp version, but the 30 amps and that, they're all the same drive, same parameters, same settings. Uh, it's connected to a 600 watt, 3.5 amp per uh, 1.9 newton meter servo motor. Uh, as you can see, I've just lashed it together just for the demo. This is my den of destruction. Where all the magic happens. Usually magic smoke, but it's still magic. Roughly connected up. Uh, right, what I want to highlight is a common problem people get caught out with when it comes to servos. This stepper motor will do 3000 RPM. And... Uh, It's got a 2,500 line encoder on it. Now it's a quadrature encoder, so that's times four. So it's 10,000 lines or counts or pulses, whatever you want to call it, for one revolution. So to do one revolution, you're going to need 10,000 pulses. Uh, so what that means is to get the full speed out of this motor, the motion controller that you use has got to output 500 kilohertz frequency to give you 3000 RPM. Now a lot of the medium to low end motion controllers won't do that. For instance this CS Labs IPM controller. Brilliant controller, excellent. But it's only 100 kilohertz output. Uh, so we can't get the full speed out of the motor. Uh, to demonstrate just what it is, I'll, I'll show you. I'm set up in Mac 3 now. Just to show you, if I go to the motor, motor tuning. I've just got it set up on Y axis for the minute. Right. The steps per is 1,000. So the encoder count is 10,000 for one revolution. So you can treat that 10,000 as though it's micro steps like you would have on a stepper drive. And you divide that 10,000 by the pitch of your ball screw. Or if you've got any ratios on, you put that in as well. But we're gonna work we're gonna work on direct drive to a 10 mil pitch screw. So it's 10,000 divided by 10 gives us 1,000 steps per millimeter. Now you'll see the velocity is set to 7128 but I'm actually maxed out pretty much on the velocity. If you look at the scale at the side, we're maxed out. If I drag that to the top, we're still 7125 with an acceleration of a thousand. And that's it, we're full, we're full flat out there. So if I save that, okay. And if I, if I jog, you'll see the feed rate, there you go. 7,128, the DROs are whizzing round. If I go to the motor, now the, if I go to the drive, you'll see it's 712.13 RPM. The drive's set to display RPM. That's it, we're absolutely flat out there. So that's the fastest you will get that motor to spin if you connected it up to a machine with that IPM controller, just as it is. which will give you seven meters a minute, which is pretty rubbish <laughs> for a router. And it's mostly because you've got such high resolution on that encoder. The, the resolution is excellent, but much, far more than you require. So basically, how, how can we get more speed out of it? 
well we do it by applying what's called electronic gearing inside the drive the drive's got uh, the option to apply a ratio and this is where it gets a bit confusion confusing it's not difficult like anything once you know how but it's knowing how because the manual is to be honest it's a good manual for a Chinese manual but it's still very Chinglish but in this case where it regards this particular item in it it's absolutely useless so I'm going to explain it to you I'm going to go to the manual to, to explain it better just to show you just how useless it is this is the portion of the manual that applies to the electronic gearing now we've got we've actually got four choices of electronic we can set up four different electronic gear ratios uh, but we're only going to set one up you, what you do you can set these up to different ratios and then you can turn them on and off by using the inputs using this little setup here you use two inputs what and have them turn on and off or select the ratio but we don't need that we're just going to use this and then the parameters we're interested in is pn 98 and 102 and basically it's a calculation between that and that which i'll explain in a bit forget all this above it anything above it applies to something that was above it anything related to this is always below it right this is what it says about electronic gearing Electronic gear ratio must meet the following conditions, otherwise will not work. Electronic gear are less than 1 1 27th of 1 27 or less. That's it. That's all it says. This bit here actually relates to this. So not none of this helps really other than telling you what this does. And that's it. That's what you've got to work out what numbers you need. Now, I'm sorry. I don't care who you are. If you can work it out from that, then what you'll need to do is get in touch with me because I want you to pick my lottery numbers. Because if you can work that out, you can easily suss the lottery system out and get, make me a millionaire. Because, I'm sorry, how the hell do you understand that? <laughs> there is <laughs> actually another clue in the manual further down. It relates to the same thing but slightly different. And, it, and it's here... It's related to these parameters, PN16 and PN17. The molecular DA of encoder divider output and the denominator DB of encoder divider output. Goes on to the next page. Basically what that is, on the drive you've got an encoder input which from the motor, the encoder on the motor goes into the drive on the input. It also has an output that you can feed back to your motion controller and if your mo motion controller is capable you can what you can fully close the loop right back to the motion controller software uh, most don't most just keep the loop closed between the motor and the drive but you have got the option if you've got a controller that can do it but you can also put electronic gear on the encoder output and that's what all this relates to but it does tell you a little bit more about it, and it does make, make it a little bit more sense. Still very Chinglish, but it does make sense. So you've got the encoder output, electronic gear used for dividing the encoder pulse signal output. Frequency division value must be satisfied. So DA divided by DB greater equals 1. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but anyway. It does give you an example. So they're using a 2500 line encoder, but they're not doing it quadrature, so they're just using the base code count. DA divided by D over crossover value, so they're using 25 divided by 8. Then after frequency division, line number 2500 divided by DA by DB equals, and they're using these numbers, so... 2500 divided by 25 by 8 divided by 8 equals 800 lines. So effectively what they've done, they've took 2500 lines and divided it and ended up with 800 lines. 
Now I'm going to explain better to you now how it works. Right, we're only bothered about these parameters 98 and 102. 98 relates to DA and 102 to DB. So what basically is you've got your encoder count divided by DA divided by DB and it equals your new encoder count. And this is how it works out. So we've got 10,000 divided by 25 divided by 5 equals 5 equals 2,000. Now you're thinking, where the hell has you got 25 divided by 5 from? And this is the problem. I don't know why they do it like they do it. 25 is the DA, 5 is the DB, all right? Now that number can be anything. All that really matters is you end up with 5 because we've got 100 kilohertz frequency coming in and we need it to become 500, so we need a 5 to 1 ratio, hence we want 5. So them numbers can be anything. As long as they end up at 5, they add up to 5. So that could easily be 100 and that could be 20 would end up at 5 and that does work I put them numbers in and it works so that's it it's as simple as that you just need 5 now why the hell they can't just have a parameter that you enter the ratio the, the 5 in for the ratio I don't know to do it that way I'm, I'm sure some clever bugger will tell you the reason why but I, that's how it works so all we're bothered about is we need to put 25 in 98 and 5 in 102 so I'm going to sh show you how we do that right oh excuse the wobble right this is just if you've ever used a Chinese VFD or even these type of drives they all work in a very similar way this drive is effectively just one big VFD There's three main, I'm not going to go into how you use the servo and set it up, but I'll, I'll give a quick rundown. You've basically got three main parts to it. You've got a DN side, which is display, and you can display various things on here, like RPM, voltage, current, other options that you've got. There's a list, so you just pick which you want. Then you've got FN, which means functions, so you've got various functions you can set all the parameters back to default you can use a jog these drives can be set up to work on their own without a controller or a computer connected up for running say linear stages so you can use these functions to jog backwards and forwards uh, do various things like that and then the next one is the parameters so we want to change the parameter 98 and you use the up and down keys you can see the digits flashing the first digit is so we're going to go to put 8 in there, use the set key to jump, one click and it jumps across the digits, 98, then you hold the set key in for a few seconds and release it, and now you enter into the parameter. By default, it's set to 1, and uh, we want 25, so... To register it you just keep your finger on the set button a few seconds then release and that's it. it's locked in now push the mod button to go back and now we want 102 do the same hold the button release it we want five in there hold the button lock it in that's it back to the parameters now for this to take effect parameter 102 you've got to re for that to work you've got to reset the drive you've got to turn it on and off so i'm just going to pause the video because i need two hands to do it okay i'm back right so that's set so now we're going to mac i'm going to reset the motor tuning y-axis now we had 10,000 before and we divided it by 10 to get a thousand. Now 
we've got 2,000. So we need to divide the 2,000 by 10 to get the steps per setting. So we need 200 in there. So as you can see, as soon as I've entered the steps per, now my graph's changed. And if you look at the slider, now we can get a lot more velocity out of it. And we can actually go to 35. But we don't want to, we just want 30. So, which is 30 meters a minute or 30,000 millimeters a minute. I can also up the acceleration a little bit if I want as well. Don't forget to save the settings, Dean. Right, now if you watch wherever it is there, when I jog it, you'll see now we've got in 30 meters a minute. If I go to the motor, we're whizzing round. If I go to the drive, 3000 RPM. Now, I'm just going to go to the MDI. We're at 4000 on the Y. I'm going to send it back to zero. You can see it's going back to zero. You'll just see how good these motors are. Watch when it stops. It's quite smooth. That's doing 3000 RPM. You see it stop nice and smooth. Smack on the mark. So now, back in here. So uh, we'll do a G1, Y10, F1000, and you'll see it'll do one revolution, which is 10 millimeters. There you go, 10 millimeters. That's it, that's how you do it. So you get your full speed from an 100 kilohertz controller and you can do that ratio if it was 50 kilohertz you could do the ratio again all it means is you have less resolution you're dividing your encoder up so you, you you're having less resolution from your encoder but in our case 2000 micro is equivalent to 2000 micro steps which is still very good a stepper drive you rarely set a stepper drive up at 2000 so uh, you're more than equivalent to a stepper but you've got twice the speed twice the torque well a lot more torque because uh, servo motors the 1.9 newton meters that this motor is that's constant across its speed so you're getting 1.9 newton meters at 3000 rpm stepper motor won't even do 3000 rpm and if even if at 1500 rpm if you got it to do that you'd be lucky if you've got 0.2 of a newton meter left you have nothing so you can see the advantage of them right I hope that helps. I will do some more videos on this. If anybody wants to know anything, just ask and I'll try and answer. Uh, that's it. Leave you with that. Alright, cheers.